ABC iView. Now, many Australians are seeing cost of living pressures starting to really bite. And a new report suggests that Australia's richest 1% has now amassed 10 times more wealth than the bottom 50% combined. The survival of the richest data from Oxfam also shows that both extreme wealth and extreme poverty have increased simultaneously for the first time in 25 years. Anthea Spinks is Oxfam's Director of Programs. She joins us in the studio now. Good morning, Anthea. Good morning. Hi. Um, those headline numbers are, are quite shocking. Talk us through some of the big findings in this report. So you're right, those findings are quite shocking and the reason why they're shocking is because for the first time in 25 years, as you said, we're seeing both poverty and inequality on the rise. Now organisations like Oxfam have worked for many decades to actually reduce inequality and poverty. So when we see that increasing, when we see the rich getting richer and when we see not just the wealthy in Australia but also the wealthy globally actually getting such a share of both the profits, the wealth and the income, it's quite devastating to see that inequality is increasing and that families, even here in Australia, are unable to afford to put food on their tables. I was going to ask you this. So how intensely is poverty uh, starting to bite, uh, especially amongst families where, for instance, uh, there might be two jobs, two incomes coming in and still... Uh, those families are, as you say, struggling to put food on the table. Well, when you've got a cost of living crisis as we do here, and when you've got inflation, when you've got jobs uh, and wages not keeping up with inflation, there are 1.7 billion people around the world mm. where their wages are not keeping up with the cost of inflation. You can just imagine what that means in terms of people trying to put food on their table. It means that they're not able to pay the basic gas bills. Um, and in countries where Oxfam works globally, some countries are actually seeing inflation at around 40, 50 per cent. So you can't afford to really do anything. And conversely, Australian billionaire wealth, wealth is 61% higher than it was before the pandemic. And there are 11 more billionaires today than there were in 2020. How is that the case? So we know that billionaire wealth has been increasing over the last couple of decades. Uh, and since the pandemic, that has increased. And so, yes, there are 11 more billionaires in Australia than there were in 2020. Now that is partially due to uh, massive company wealth and a lot of the richest people in the planet actually get their wealth from, uh, from their assets and from the wealth that they might make through shares or through other um, holdings. So when you see that wealth increasing and uh, when you see uh, the, the, the other end of the spectrum not being able to afford anything, uh, it's quite alarming and that's why Oxfam is actually calling for a number of things to change the system that we have. I want to go through those things uh, one by one. Stage three tax cuts, you're asking the government to scrap them. I think the Prime Minister over the weekend was saying the government still intends to bring in those stage three tax cuts. They disproportionately benefit higher income earners. Why should they go in your view? Well, they should go for the very simple reason that they will actually disproportionately in, in, uh, support and give more wealth to our high income earners. And this report is clearly showing that those wealthy people are earning more and having more money than they could possibly spend in a lifetime. So stage three tax cuts is the first step to fix our broken economic system and our tax system, uh, and including then looking at additional measures like a wealth tax, like a windfall profits tax, tax. Oxfam firmly believes that inequality is a policy failure. How would so a wealth policy can yeah. fix that. You, you mentioned wealth tax. What, how, what, what sort of wealth tax are you after? So a wealth tax, for example, would be actually taxing over and above a normal tax bracket. So Oxfam's calculated that here in Australia alone, if we implemented a wealth tax on millionaires and billionaires, we could generate revenue of about $29 billion a year. Now that's a staggering figure. That could do so much. It could lift the daily income support payments that we have, which we know are not enough to keep people above the poverty line. It could increase our contributions as a foreign aid donor. For example, in the Horn of Africa right now, there are people on the brink of famine. We know that all the emergency responses globally around the world are underfunded. Mm. That $29 billion could address poverty and inequality in Australia. It could also go a long way to addressing it globally. There's no doubt that that money would be hugely beneficial. The counter-argument that is often made against increases in taxes is that it... Uh, puts aside incentives for investment, that people who run those companies will just go to other countries and take their business elsewhere. What would be your response to that? The response to that would be that actually what we're calling for is actually a, a systemic and wholesale reform globally. So we know that there are other countries in the world that are starting to look at a wealth tax, uh, including countries in the global north as well as the global south. Uh, so we know that actually the solution that we have needs to be wholesale reform globally. Um, we also know that basically uh, 
we're not saying they're not making a profit. We're not saying that we don't want companies to actually make a profit and make a return to their shareholders. What we're saying is that that is getting at a ridiculous level. That is getting to the point where actually you have billionaires whose wealth is literally cannot be spent in a lifetime. Uh, and a lot of that will also be passed on to, to the next generation and will just be creating a new generation of aristocracy essentially um, by not reforming the tax systems that we currently have both in Australia and globally. Okay. Anthea speaks from Oxfam. Great to have you in today. Thanks for coming in.